Good morning sheep fans, Cammy's the name, sheep is the game. In today's video, a few different things going on. First up, I make some repairs to my scanning trailer, some improvements that were needed to get things working as efficiently as possible. We have engineer Ewan helping us with that. I then do a couple of scanning jobs and we briefly discuss the different setups, the benefits and have a bit of fun as we go. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Let's go. So we're back with Ewan, who we saw in the previous video, who did the initial repairs to the trailer. I'm now back, I've given him a list of things that we need done, and he's just getting started into it. First thing we're doing is try to lift that chair up so I'm sitting in a better position for scanning like I was discussing. So he's came up with this clever idea of a single sheet of steel here. Is it steel? Aye. Aye. Folded the way he's done here. It's quite clever, he just put the angle grinder in it a little bit to make it weak enough to bend and then he's going to put a weld in it to make it solid again. And that's going to be the platform for my chair. Nice and light, easy to move. He's clever. That's all right for height. Oh, really? Who taught you to weld? Me. Just taught yourself? YouTube. Pretty much, I. YouTube? Uh, and then I went and did a college course just to learn some extra stuff. Get into the TIG welding as well. Is this the TIG welding you're doing just no, now? This is MIG. TIG's a bit too hard for me. I wouldn't like to do that for... <laughs> Right, okay. Anything that wasn't just for me. Right, okay, okay. So just if you're playing about yourself, you'll do something. Ah, exactly, yeah. It lets it, me do aluminium and stuff like that. But does it do softer metals? Is that? It can weld any metal, it's just a lot harder and slower than MIG. Right, okay. And this is MIG? This is MIG. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, any of you welding experts on here, I'll just have a wee close up here and I just want some feedback to see if he's making a good job of this because obviously I want my chair to look nice. <laughs> Rusty chair, so it might not just be perfect. <laughs> oh, my, my lights died here already. I'll watch your mic in that hot bit. Oh, my. Just singed it already there. This was the other problem we were talking about the other day when we were scanning. Just a fraction short for hooking in there. That's those improvements in the trailer. Let's get to that scanning job now. So we're at the first job today with uh, Kevin and Andrew and the team. And I'm gonna ask them a few questions because every farm you go to, one of the great things, every farm you go to, they do something a wee bit different. And Kevin's one of the kind of earlier lammers, certainly in this district. So first question I'm gonna ask you, yep. Kevin, why did you lamb so early? Hey. Probably ties into the rest of the farm, to be honest. Uh, the calf, calf starting at the end of March, so it gets the bulk of the lambing out of the way before calving starts. Right, okay. So, it it's actually a really good reason. It just yep. fits in with your system. Yep. And it's, I don't know anything about cows as I say all the time <laughs> on this channel, but is calving at the end of March quite a common time to yes, calve? Yes, uh, spring calvers. 
Yeah, so get the ball kit away before they go to the grass as well. And the cabins. And there's really just how many people are working the farm here at uh, Lamington? Myself, my dad, my mum. Right, so three years. I've got so all that. Well, she'll take holidays. Aye, so but she's obviously got her hands full at the moment as well. Aye. Three wee nippers running about. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> so she tells you all the time. Ah, oh, you'll get a slap for this one later. Probably. <laughs> so okay, so your lambing that that explains well. Would other factors be potentially pr prices you get for the lambs? Yeah, we'll start at I think the earliest we sold the end of May from March lambing, so yeah, you do have a good price. And you've definitely. been really rewarded for that this year, aye. particularly. Yes, aye. Aye. The averages have been great this year. Mm -hmm. so, uh, hopefully, hopefully it follows on next year. And, and that's one of the fascinating things I find when we, we go to all these farms. It's like we're all doing the same job, but yeah. quite often we're all doing it differently. And, it, and there's various factors that as Kevin's saying, he's got a cow side, the cattle side of things to think about as well and make that work. Other farms, it depends on your ground, the, the climate where you are, although you guys get it pretty hard here, eh? I mean, even yeah. this morning it's fairly snowy. Like, they're a wee bit, a lot higher than I am down in Comarnock. Yeah. Um, Braving the blizzards yesterday, bringing the ewes in for you. Just so tough. You're just so <laughs> tough, hardy boys. Another thing I like to point out is that Kevin's standing slightly on a higher bit of ground than me. <laughs> I Aye. swear, honest. We're nearly, <laughs> we're nearly the same height. I swear. Anyway, the ears are looking tremendous. You'll see all the different colours in the bums. I don't know if I've touched on this before. You obviously yeah. change the crayons as you go. Yes, I. They, they were changed twice. The reds first. I actually threw two Beltex cross texels in. That mm -hmm. I got for the yellow lambs. They went out with a blue just so that I can tell the difference. Yep. From lambing, so I don't keep any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went on to purple as we had that left for last year, but there was very little at the end of the, the second term, so I didn't bother changing it. You tease as well, don't you? We do, there is, where do we go? Uh, him there. Him there. <laughs> Better mention that, <laughs> um, they p picking that out on camera, he's a teaser there. Yeah. And he's ideal, when they're that ugly, uh, it's ideal because you can spot them easy and pull, pick them out. Uh, so yeah, that's the reason colours, uh, crayons changed, as Kevin says there, it's yeah. great for uh, judging when the sheep are going to lamb as well. Do you bring them all in at once or do you bring no, them in bring the, depending bring on colours? Bring the colours in, so I think at the end of the second week we had about 280 out of 345 tapping. So fantastic within, within tapping rate. We'll find out how good it is just now, obviously, but fantastic tapping rate. And that is ideal, when, when I used to lamb at, at home, uh, where I was sort of based, that was the sa shed space was at a premium. So the crayons were invaluable for telling which sheep were to come in first and then for the second turn, clear them out, bring your second turn ones in when they start lambing and that way you can make the most of your shed space without having sheep in for two weeks before they even need to be in. So it works well like that. Did you spend, spend some of your tax money? Get taxed and get a poly turn. He's obsessed, he's ob <laughs> see this is because he's obsessed that we're, uh, we're making... You admitted it! Because we're sheep shears, <laughs> Archie's the one that makes the money. I'm just the one that's, that's aspiring. I'm aspiring to make money. <laughs> Let's go on with the scanning. Hey! Good sheep dog, too. Hey, Struggling to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and grunting. <laughs> How's stuff on? Night. I don't know how he sleeps in that caravan every day. Oh, right. Really need to get a jack on that. Good morning, sheep fans. Cami's the name. Sheep's the game. We're scanning sheep again. So like how many times can I spin out a scanning video? Let me just go back and get my phone. Great we sleep here. It's great just waking up and being right at your work. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. What have we got on today, you might ask? We have got a Beltex tarp standing here, nicely shed out by David. We're back. You've seen this shed before. That's David's caravan there, where he lives. He let me use it for a wee funny sketch at the start. It wasn't that funny, I understand. 
go easy on me. Meg, what are you doing? So they, these sheep here are March lambing yows. Again, similar idea, the lambs are going to be ready quite early and catch that nice, buoyant spring market. We don't know what's happening with Brexit, but are you worried about Brexit, David? No, he's not worried because his dad pays the bills. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> he's fair. He's fair us in the house making contingency plans. I saw him wrapping up the floorboards this morning, stuffing cash under it. What's that about? <laughs> that's, a, that's a safety net, he says. A safety net. Floorboards stuffed with cash. But let's get the trailer back in. Last time I was just in the crate, but now the scanning crate, my new setup that you've seen already. It's all good to go. Let's get back in and get started. Aye, that's mad, but pubs just open as normal. More or less. Remember those days? Remember that mad week in August? <laughs> So we just heard last night the news and by the time this goes out it will probably be in place but the Scottish Government has decided that from the 26th Boxing Day we're going to a three week lockdown. Everywhere is going into tier four, totally locked down and David is one of those people who he and his girlfriend <laughs> have always been in different tiers but they live far apart now and really, are you going to class that as a bubble you're in? Aye, uh, extended, uh, extended bubble. Extended bubble, uh, I, lo I love bubble. <laughs> Aye, so David, it's a bit of a kind of fox and a hound situation, being that <laughs> she's a bit of a fox and he's an absolute hound. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it's not just it, it's not, it's, you're not just weird because she's good looking, she's also got a big dairy farm. Erin, <laughs> <laughs> Erin, you'll enjoy that, I know you will. Shout to you. If you need any winters, like I want the first shout of the winter, and not him. Yeah. Job finished here. I just jumped straight to the end. Don't want to do too much scanning and bore you all to death. Better with just a little bit of banter. A little look at some sheep though. Blue texels. Wait till I get in here. We're on to another rare breed. I suppose it is a rare breed. There's heaps of them. It's not that rare, but they're becoming very, very fashionable. People always seem to like finding new breeds to get into, and Blue Texels are definitely an up and coming breed right now, with prices for tops and females as well rising every year. And they're quite a nice sheep. I believe they're just a sort of genetic anomaly in the Texels that's been bred on, which has created this kind of black. Almost badger face, if you've ever seen a badger face, it's got that kind of look about it. But obviously it's an absolute unit. Probably generally slightly smaller than your standard Texel would be. But a fantastic shaped sheep and really popular because Texels maybe have this view of being quite an elitist sheep. So people wanting to get into a pedigree breed that has a good carcass and a good nature and is nice to look at. A lot of them are choosing blue Texels now. But if you've got a spare quarter million, I know a guy with some nice texel cheap he would sell you. <laughs> Another one finished. Thanks very much for watching sheep fans. See you for the next one.